This is Oklahoma Zone News 9. And welcome back to News 9 at 9.30. I'm Storm Jones. I'm Lacey Lowry. Every Thursday, we go in-depth with Oklahoma City Police Chief Wade Gourley. Now, following the death of Oklahoma County Sergeant Bobby Swartz, we asked the chief about the impact officer-involved shootings have on members of law enforcement. Here's our Lisa Monahan. We are grateful to have Chief Wade Gourley back in studio this morning. What has been a very difficult week for law enforcement and for our community. Tomorrow, Sergeant Bobby Swartz, an Oklahoma County deputy killed in the line of duty, will be laid to rest. Deputy Mark Johns now recovering from his injuries. I know tragic events such as these will have a significant impact on the law enforcement community. And Chief, how is OCPD handling this? First of all, you know, in Oklahoma County, in uh, all of the metro area with Oklahoma City, we, we surround several cities, several municipalities, several different law enforcement agencies. We all work very closely together. We know each other. Um, we've worked together for a lot of years. Um, and, it, and it definitely has an impact. Um, something as significant as that is just not something that you ever want to see, a call that you ever want to respond to. Um, and it does have an impact on our officers as well. They, they, especially the ones that responded and were the initial responding officers. I've, I've viewed their body cams and looked at what they did on the uh, initial response and it's absolutely incredible. Um, I'm so amazed uh, at every day at what our people do and, and how they function under very difficult circumstances. But from here, mostly now, we wanna make sure um, that they're okay and that uh, you know our wellness unit is is uh, visiting with them and, and it's definitely had a serious impact on those individuals, those officers that were the first ones there. And this is the second notable ambush on law enforcement in just two weeks time. How do you reassure your officers? You know, the biggest thing we can do um, as an agency and, and really for any agency in law enforcement is number one, you make sure your people have the absolute best equipment, you know, that they can go to work with every day and we do that. Uh, but then second is training and, and how we train our officers. We just completed uh, a complete training for all of our sector-based patrol officers throughout the department uh, in our reality-based training in, unit and putting them in several situations and talking about ambushes and how to approach calls and houses and those things. And so that's really about the best we can do is make sure they're trained and equipped uh, and ready to go and face whatever's in front of them every day. And with attacks on law enforcement becoming more common, um, what do you think is attributing to this? You know, why are we seeing more of this? You know, quite honestly, there, there's been a lot of rhetoric in the last couple of years that has just turned toward making police the enemy, uh, making law enforcement in this country the enemy. And, and I really think that's part of it. I think that's where, when you have someone who's already on the edge anyway, they can easily obtain uh, firearms and ammunition now, um, and they're already on that edge, and you, and you put the ideology in their head that law enforcement is the enemy. It works as a justification for them to take these kind of actions, and it makes it a lot more difficult on our officers. And I can tell you, uh, I've been in law enforcement with the Oklahoma City Police Department almost 33 years, working most of that time as a patrol officer in a, in a patrol car, making traffic stops, answering calls. and. I, I, we are seeing so many more firearms uh, in the people that we encounter than we've ever seen um, uh, by far. And these are individuals a lot of times that are not, you know, they're not, not people that you really want in possession of firearms. These are people that are known to commit crimes and, and the types of firearms that they have are way more advanced than what I saw early in my career out on patrol. When, when we, we rarely ran across uh, firearms. Used to, when you ran across a firearm on a call or a traffic stop, it was a big deal. And now it's, it's almost daily um, that officers are running across these. So what is the solution to prevent this in the future? I think the biggest thing is, you know, everybody talks about Second Amendment rights and the rights to own firearms. And absolutely, we, we want those folks that, that are, you know, good law members of society to have firearms. But we have to have better ways to remove firearms from those individuals that aren't, uh, those individuals that want to do harm. And one of the things that we do at the Oklahoma City Police Department and law enforcement is doing all across the country is working hard to identify these individuals ahead of time, you know, before it gets to this point. But then we also need laws that can help us when we do encounter someone that should not be in possession of firearms, that we're able to get those away from that individual. And that's what you see a lot of times is you know, law enforcement knows who these individuals are. They're people that we encounter regularly.
that are out there committing crimes and, and just having that, you know, the teeth and the ability to take a firearm away from someone, sometimes before they have a, a felony conviction, is really what we need when we identify, uh, you know, these individuals that could be a danger to the public. Chief, we so appreciate your input on this difficult topic. We're keeping all of law enforcement in our prayers. And coming up next week, we'll be taking a closer look at the resources available to officers who may be struggling with these types of events, whether it be responding to horrific crime scenes or even grieving a loss of their own. If you have a question, as always, you can email chatwiththechief at griffin.news, and we'll be sure to get you some answers. See you next week.